Welcome back to my art studio. I'm Natja. I'm a picture book artist and a freelance illustrator from the Netherlands. And sometimes I get a bit tired of working in my art studio every day because I don't get to meet people and it's also nice to be outside. So once a week I like to visit another art studio or a cafe or even draw outside. And there's of course a lot of things to take along, but you don't want it to be too heavy. I learn what I need when I'm drawing or painting outside of my art studio. And today I'm going to show you my setup for drawing and painting digitally and traditionally. I'm going to show you all of the contents in this bag. So the first thing I will show you, of course, is the bag itself. And I will probably not pronounce this name correctly, but it's a Thule, 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 Thule. <laughs> it's Thule. I did not pick this color for any particular reason, besides that it was the last one of this kind. So I got this from an online store and I got this bag because it has a lot of compartments. It has this padded section for my laptop. So in the front, you can open it and it has room for accessories and on the sides, you can take your water and anything else, extra water, whatever you like. The bag is sturdy and soft at the same time, so it doesn't hurt my back. You can adjust it here to whatever um, sizing you like. So what I have in this bag, as I showed before, here is a padded section to take your laptop and I believe that 15 inch is the size, the largest size that can fit. I have a 13 inch MacBook Pro and that fits very nicely. This sleeve contains my MacBook. I found it important to add an extra sleeve just for um, some extra protection in the bag. It has um, some memory foam and the inside of the sleeve is very very soft. So the next thing that I have in this bag, and there's a lot of room as you can see, um, is a small Wacom Intuos Pro tablet. So in my art studio I use a large one and for traveling and visiting art studios and places outside of my studio I have this smaller one. I got it second hand, so it does have some scratches, but it works just fine. And I got it for, I think, a third of the price. Whenever you look for products to use while you're traveling, it's always a good thing to see what you can get second hand. And I got this smaller one because it's nice and handy to take along. And it's um, more of a hassle to take my big Wacom tablet um, on the go, so that is why I went for a smaller one. In the front pocket of my bag, I have the Wacom pen. There's an extra protective sleeve in here. You can add your tablet, for example. I sometimes take my um, iPad in here, but right now I use it to store my external hard drive. My bag also has room for this keyboard. I do not always uh, use that when I'm on the road, but I thought I'd show you <laughs> how much space the bag has so you get an idea. It also has room for this, of course. I'm just going to say this whenever I don't remember a word in English. <laughs> it also has this nice little pocket that I use for my cables and um, these are all the cables that are for the things I just showed you. It also has some space for my USB hub. I can connect it to my um, MacBook so I can connect my, my Wacom tablet and um, it also has a slot for the SD card for my camera so that's just perfection. I really like this one, it's really essential for me for working uh, outside of my art studio because I can connect all of the things that I just showed you since Apple um, only has two small USB-C ports I believe in the MacBook so this is really an essential for me. I also use this little pocket to store my um, camera batteries. So this is my digital setup. So does this resemble what you take along? I'm very curious to know what things you take along when drawing digitally. It can be as simple as just taking your tablet, the Apple Pencil and Procreate, I guess. 
but I prefer working in Photoshop with my Wacom tablet. So I'm now going to prepare my bag for painting traditionally. So I'm going to show you all of the items that I want to take along and then we're going to put them inside of the bag. And then we're going to see if everything fits like I imagined. So here you can see all of the things that I take with me when I'm going to paint traditionally on location. It's not a lot, but it's still a lot to carry of course when you are wanting to be a little bit lightweight when you go outside or you have to walk a lot. And I do have to say usually I do bring one of these two, it depends when I'm going to paint with watercolors I'm going to take this little watercolor book and when I just sketch in my sketchbook then I really do not need a lot. I can just use this, it contains my pencils and all of the drawing supplies I need and my sketchbook. But when I'm going to paint, I always take along a bottle for water, but I also take a bottle for water um, for painting and it's really handy. I can just disassemble this and put water in it and keep this water clean and Sometimes I also take this bottle to spray when I'm going to do watercolors and some masking tape. I'm going to take a few brushes depending on what I'm going to paint. Usually the brushes are a tiny bit smaller but when painting landscapes I'm doing a course I do uh, take these ones. I also recently purchased this um, tiny watercolor box. They are really nice and um, yeah they are just very handy to go inside of the bag because it's so small. I also take a little bit of gouache paint with me. I rarely take anything more than this because it just gets too heavy. So these are the simple things that I take along with me when I'm going to paint on location. I forgot to mention there's also some uh, tissue paper for absorbing some of the water or paint. So I recently started a, a landscape painting course with Schoolism and I got this uh, little watercolor sketchbook um, exactly for that so I can do some landscape studies and uh, I had to do a sketch master study for example and it's um, a study from Nathan Fauk's work. He's also teaching the class and we have to make 10 of these uh, little studies and I picked one of his uh, study paintings to do this one so I'm soon going to make more and it's just nice and handy to have a separate sketchbook for this and um, yeah, I can't wait to learn more, so I will also leave the link down below for this course. Uh, I really would like to hear the setup that you use for painting traditionally. I'm going to put everything that you just saw into my bag. Let's see if it all fits. I can add the supplies I use the most or I need at hand when I'm going to paint from nature outside everything to this front pocket and for example um, I could add the brush that I use most and add these watercolors in that way I can um, grab everything really quickly when I do see something beautiful in the landscape and I need to preserve time because of the lighting and um, I would only need to open this, so that is one of the reasons why I got this bag. But right now I'm going to draw at uh, another art studio, so I'm just uh, inside, I'm going to be dry, and uh, there's not so much of a time rush. So at this moment I do not really need this, but it's still a nice compartment to add some of my brushes and the tape, for example. And in reality, I also use this to, for example, add my phone. So I didn't show you yet. 
there are also some items that I typically take along with me. Most of this doesn't get used, so what I do always need is my um, graphite pencil for sketching. I also use a tiny eraser, a blending stick. So these are really the, the essentials that I take along. A pencil sharpener is also very nice because if you break the pencil point, you really need a sharpener. So that's that. And I can just zip it up like that. And my bag is ready to go outside or go to another art studio or cafe to paint traditionally or draw traditionally, whatever you like. So very happy with both setups, traditional and digitally. And of course, I, I have been fine-tuning this for a lot of time. I can uh, fine-tune this for years, I think. Sometimes I notice I don't use something very much and I just leave it out. And sometimes someone gives an awesome tip and I take something along and think, wow, that I didn't know this before. <laughs> so if you have any tips, just uh, let me know. And also if you take away something from this video, uh, I'd be happy to know. Thank you.